Hello and welcome to this episode of Hospitality Talks. I'm Katie Moses, uh, founder and MD of Cam Media, and I am so delighted to be joined by Vic Searle, who is founder and head hawk at Data Hawks. Vic, um, at the moment, we're seeing so much of you out there because, let's be honest, our industry needs a bit of help um, with how we use our data. But for anyone that hasn't seen you um, in the last few months and talking about what you know about them, please let them know who you are. Yeah, so like you say, I'm founder of Data Hawks and um, started it about two years ago, which was amazing timing, just in time for lockdown. Um, I've been, I'm a hospitality lifer. I've been in hospitality for like getting on for 30 years as an operator and then as a marketer. And I started the business because I really wanted to empower marketers to, you know, really take their seat at the boardroom table. And I thought, why not? Why not through data? Absolutely. And I, I mean, obviously, being a research agency ourselves, and I know that we've, we've done some work together. We kind of know, if we're honest with ourselves, there's a bit of a problem out there in hospitality with how we, how much data we collect and how we use it. Um, and, you know, our aim is to go out and get that data um, and give it to our clients. And your aim is to make sure they use it properly. So yeah. wh why, why do you think that we have such a problem with using data well in hospitality? I th you know, I think we're an industry that's just built on passion and emotion and gut instinct. And I think that we're really, really comfortable. And I think we really enjoy the process of making decisions for our customers. And, and I think that we're a little bit suspicious of data. And the other big thing is that, you know, when we're marketing, we want to be doing stuff that, that people can see. And I think there's like always a bit of suspicion, particularly from operators who think that if we can't see sort of like physical, tangible things, then we're not marketing enough. Um, and, and I think that's like led to us producing things like loads of, you know, printed tote bags and posters and table talkers and, and, and stuff like that. And I think that because we're so focused on the customer as well, we think that we can't possibly make decisions and use empathy and, and use all the heart that this industry is known as if we're using data. But I think that's wrong. And I think that's because we don't really understand marketing as an industry. And I don't think we use it in the right way. And so we're not really sure of just how much power we could have and just how much closer we could get to our customers. Because actually the bizarre thing is that, you know, to be a customer business, you really have to become a data business. Yeah, absolutely. And, and of course, we, we are now you know, in the technological age where we have access to all of that data. But what kind of data should we be looking at and, and, and how should we be using that data? Yeah, exactly. Because there's loads of different sorts of data and data has become such a catch all. You know, people are constant. I mean, I'm sick to death of hearing about data. It's everywhere. I wonder what people who don't. You're in the wrong job then. <laughs> I am a bit. Sometimes I'm just like, geez, I'm sick to death of hearing about data. Um, but I think it's because we're not focusing on the right kinds of data, the right kinds for our business. Um, and that's the key. First of all, you've got to be collecting the kind of data that's going to help you deliver, you know, your your objectives. And I think we've got ourselves into a bit of a fix because I think that quite often we so focus on vanity metrics, you know, the number of likes on a post or how many people have signed up to our database that we collect data that supports that stuff. Um, and what we really should be collecting is stuff that tells us, you know, that we're actually looking at our customers, not just people who are engaged with our brands. Um, you know, if you're following a social media platform, it's great, but it doesn't mean you're a customer. It just means that you, you like it. So I guess the first thing is that we want to be finding data that completely supports proof of presence, yeah. but it puts a person in your business or having bought something um, on, your, on your website. And there's a number of kinds of data. So absolutely be collecting demographic data, which is stuff like, you know, email addresses and uh, genders and, you know, ages and, and stuff like that. We want to collect uh, geographic stuff, which is, you know, where people live and, and where people work. Behavioral data, which is like how people are interacting with your business or your products. And we can get a lot of that stuff from the platforms that you're using. But psychographic important uh, data is really important because all of the other data will tell us, you know, who people are and what they're doing. But psychographic data is the data that will tell us why they're doing it. You know, it, it helps us understand the mindsets and the motivations. And that's probably the most important, important set of data to be to be capturing. And then when you've got it, you want to be using that to build an acquisition, conversion and retention plan. So if we know in our data who our most valuable customers are, for instance, it's much easier to work out how to find more of them. 
And if we know in our data that we've got people who maybe share similar characteristics to those most valuable customers in terms of their behaviors and, and their profiles, then it's much easier to work out who we can convert to spending a bit more money or, or visiting a bit more frequently. Um, and then when you've got that and you've got that strategy that's been really driven by the data, then you can just really bring that to life with all the creativity and empathy and innovation and passion that this industry is incredible at. You know, it's data and hospitality humans. It's like a dream combination. If only we would use it. <laughs> so we say that perhaps we don't use data in, in, in the way that we should do in hospitality or certainly not as much as we should. But who is doing it well? Who uh, who do you sort of look at out there and go, right, they, they've got this together, they know what they're doing? Literally every other industry except hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, I know that sounds dead cheeky, but you know what, even if you think about closest cousins like retail, they're 30 years ahead of us in terms of how they gather data and how they use it to drive sales. You know, you think about supermarkets, right? You know, if you go into a Sainsbury's or something and you're using a Nectar card, they know everything about you. They know your insecurities. They know whether you're a person that cooks or grabs a ready meal about two minutes before closing. They know if you go to the wine first or the chocolate first or the fruit and veg first. You know, they know everything. If you're using a scanning gun, they know your journey around the store so they can start to build a picture of how people are like engaging and interacting with their physical location. And then they can put the right displays, you know, in the in the right places and and offer a really personalized experience. Um, and then, you know, they're gathering all this data, but most importantly, they know exactly how to use it to, to turn it into like hard cash. And then you think about businesses like Netflix and, and Spotify, you know, they're capturing data at every turn and they know who you are, they know what you're doing, they know why you're doing it, and they know when you're most likely to drop out and like cancel that subscription so they can like immediately take action to, to stop to stop you doing it. Um, and I think that in, in our industry, you know, it, I've, I've got a couple of clients that are pretty far along their data journey now because I've been maybe working with them for, for, you know, maybe 18 months. And they've gone, they've tr completely transformed, you know, probably over the last 18 months or so from being businesses that were pretty much driven on, you know, paper, you know, people like filling out bits of paper or using like Excel spreadsheets or capturing like a tiny bit of data. And now they're being really, really informed by the data they're gathering and they're seeing incredible results. Um, and I've got to shout out brands like Tenpin who, you know, have gone from a really sort of analog way of doing things and now use data to inform everything from where their new sites are going to open to, you know, the stuff that's going on their menu to their communications. And they are seeing incredible results from it. So, um, yeah, there's there's a huge, a huge amount of possibility and a, and a huge amount of opportunity. We've, we've just got to grab it and we've got to start doing some stuff. And I, I, I think, I mean, you're absolutely correct in what you say, but I think a really important point there is the talking about the personalization of the experience, because we did some research uh, sort of earlier on this year that said that from the 18 to 24 year old age bracket, something like 79% of people were very happy to give their data, to give the, you know, their, their, yeah. their, the knowledge about them to a brand as long as it was going to personalize and improve yeah. the service that, that, that they get. Um, what would be the one piece of advice that you would give to somebody that's watching now who's going, you know, I've got a mountain of data, but now what, you know, what, what, what would you suggest then? What's, what's the golden nugget that someone can take away from today? Well, aside from just calling me, Katie, and just going, do your research me out. Program, and then get data hooks to help you use it. <laughs> well, I mean, apart from that, because that's obviously the most important thing, apart from that, I, I think you know, it's interesting, right? Because I, I talk to a lot of marketers, I talk to a lot of CEOs, I talk to a lot of MDs and finance people, and I and I listen, you know, more importantly to a lot of the stuff that's been said. And I think the first thing we've got to do is we've got to stop thinking that we know what's best for our customers. And you know, this this whole piece on you know order and pay technology. It's driving me to distraction at the moment because all I'm hearing is marketers saying, our customers don't want this. This, this doesn't constitute good service and good hospi you know, hospitality. And they're trying to sort of like steer things away from that. 
And yet every bit of insight I've read, you know, whether it's here, whether it's overseas, has said that, no, people really do want this technology. They want to keep it. And actually, they really do want to give you their data because they want those personalized and, and really relevant experiences. So I think the first thing is just, just stop trying to, you know, guess what people want because you are not them. So how could you possibly know what they want and start, start using your data? Um, I, I think the second thing is, you know, collect as much pop data as you can, proof of presence data. There's this obsession. And every time I talk to a, a new client, the first thing they do is go, here's all my social data. I'm really chuffed with how many likes we've got. And honestly, that's you barking up the wrong tree. It's a complete red herring. We want to be looking at proof of presence so we can build a picture of the people that are actually, you know, using using your, your business. And to your point, people do not mind. They do not mind about giving you that data. They want to give that data. And I've, I've seen very similar stats to that myself. They want to give data because they, they want that personalization. And I think, I think the final part of it is you have to get curious. Um, you know, we in hospitality, I, I think that the thing that makes us great as an industry is that you can do what I did. You start working in the bar when you're 18, and you end up on the management board, you know, a few years later. It's incredible. And there are a few industries that, that you can do that. Mm -hmm. But because we're built on gut instinct and graft and blood, sweat and tears and all that sort of stuff, I think that that can set us up potentially to fail in the future because we're not noticing that there are other things going on out there. And we're not noticing that particularly younger groups are giving us really clear signals that that doesn't suit them. And we're not picking up on them because we're so sort of like, you know, blinkered by, by our, own, our own views and our, our own experiences, I guess. So get curious. We wanna know who's coming into your business. And I can, I can tell you without exception, when I tell you who goes into your business and who spends the most money, without exception, everybody's like, what? That's really? not what I'm yeah, spending. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. um, so that, that's the first thing. Find out as much as, as you can about them, but really delve into the why of why people are doing it, because that, that's really important. Um, when you know why somebody's doing things, it means your marketing can be much smarter, your communications could be, could be much more tailored, and you're going to engage with on a level with people that you wouldn't have thought possible you know, before. And the irony is that the thing that's stopping us using data is our fear that it will remove the heart from this industry. And actually, it's going to be data that helps us get closer than we ever dreamed would be possible to our, to our customers. So just be as curious as you can. Absolutely. And I think that we could probably say that's a good lesson for life, actually. Keep All that right. curiosity. Absolutely. Absolutely. Vic, thank you for your time um, and for your advice. And um, every single time I speak to you, I learn something new. So thank you so much for, for giving me your time. Thank you. Thoughts today. I've absolutely loved being on. Honestly, I'm chuffed to be on this. I've seen so many amazing people. And now I feel like I've joined a Hall of Fame or something. So <laughs> thank you so much. I'm oh, thrilled to be on it. Thank you so much for your time.